Hi, this is Fabian Niciesa. We're here on Forbidden Planet TV, and we're going to be talking about outrage. Not just the normal kind of outrage we all feel, but the print edition of Outrage, the Webtoon digital comic I did with Riley Brown, which is now in print form and worthy of your time. Read it or I will be outraged. Welcome, I'm Andrew Sumner. This is Fabian Nicieza back again on Forbidden Planet TV. Mate, it's always... As if such... I never left. Yeah, I know. And miraculously, you're in the same outfit as last time. So am I, I. Yes, and the same one I'll be wearing months from now. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, so, mate, uh, we, so you've joined us on recent episodes to talk about a, a wealth of your creative endeavours, not the least of which are your two fine crime novels, uh, the self-made widow and suburban dicks and uh, we had a chat recently about your thunderbolts omnibus series and about your involvement in the captain marvel um the genis fell edition uh or omnibus series but this time around uh we're talking about your uh, creator own project uh co-created with the artist riley brown um outrage which you can buy both a soft cover and a hard cover edition of outrage from forbiddenplanet.com from the links attached to our conversation right down here yeah. right down here order now before andy gets arrested by whatever the sirens were in the <laughs> yeah, <I> know, did <laughs> <laughs> those were sirens were not here in the united states those sirens were in the uk <laughs> they, they, were coming, they were coming for me <laughs> for all you europeans who say that there's always so much crime in the united states there were the sirens <laughs> the epicenter of crime is here in west london right here right so here. <laughs> mate what can you tell me about outrage Outrage is um, began as a digital comic on Webtoon uh, a few years ago, a vertical scroll format. It's co-created by myself and uh, Riley Brown, who was my partner in crime for several years on Cable and Deadpool monthly series from Marvel. Um, the character's roots um, were basically born from um, an idea I had, which is a pretty simple, obvious idea. Um, I read someone saying something stupid to someone else on the internet. And I thought to myself, I wish I could reach through their screen and smack them because they're an idiot. And then I thought, Hey, wait, what if someone could reach through their screen and smack you if you're being an idiot? So outrage is basically a, a, um, a digital solid holographic program that is gaining sentience and it can reach through your device and smack you around if you're being an idiot um so that's how it starts and it starts that clearly outrage is very busy because there's a lot of idiots on the internet um even more so than there were in 2017 when i originally <laughs> first started development so, so um, true. And, and and so the the initial story that is um season one uh, of the digital comic which was 26 chapters um Webtoon publishes a vertical scroll format. Uh, each chapter is the equivalent of roughly five to six pages of a comic book. So the first season was 26 chapters. Um, and, and we're just wrapping up the second season now, which is carrying us chapters 27 through 56. And I'm sure we'll have a print edition of that down the road once we're able to. The contractually, we're not able to do print editions for quite a while until after they've, they've run through their digital uh, time period, time yeah. window, as it were. Um, so uh, the story evolves in that the bully who bullies the bullies on the internet um, is, is draws the attention of authoritative powers because anybody would want to find out what this thing is. If you're the military, the government, the FBI, law enforcement, you're going to want to find out what is this thing that is clearly manifesting itself in, in in real life in real time through the internet that's that's dangerous right so they start to try to figure out who it is um it's a mystery as to who is behind outrage for the first half of this of the season one uh the print edition uh volume so the story the first half of the story is who is outraged the second half of the story is more why is why do we do this? Why do we act this way? Basically, why are so many human beings so ridiculously stupid? Um, 
and they're uh, look just here's here's a spoiler alert for readers we don't solve that <laughs> we, we can't explain why so many people are so stupid you have to look in the mirror and judge for yourself um but but the whole premise is to try to look at just the over ludicrousness uh, idiocy meanness and mean spiritedness that that is out there and, and call people on it and and, and I try very hard to, to, to be left versus right agnostic. Um, liberals can be just as stupid as conservatives, though maybe not as dangerously stupid, but just as stupid. So I try to call out, um, I try to call out stupidities on both sides. Um, yes, it leans a little more authoritarian, conservative um, driven, but that's because the whole book was written uh, both season one and then even season two uh when when trump was in office so Oops, yeah. it, it, it trump is the president in the story um in, in all of season one and, and and that that colors the entire nature of the perspective that the government and government personnel are taking on the issue at hand and the military and all of this stuff um so so in essence the the fbi has two agents trying to find out who created this 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 holographic construct meanwhile the holographic construct is 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 starting to understand that it exists on its own um and and there's a supporting cast of characters who may or may not have been involved some if not all who may have been involved in the creation of outrage and 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 we're focusing on them because the fbi is focusing on them. fascinating mate. Oh, what was it like creating for for the original format being webtoon you know vertical scrolling what was that like the irony is that because of the way riley brown works and he riley's incredibly gifted um and was well versed and well aware of the potential of of uh, digital comics years before many other artists were and years before publishers even latched onto it he, we were talking about digital comic stuff back in 2008 2009 and had a had a do a landscape, you know, a horizontal scroll format uh, and things we can do. And he and I have done um, horizontal landscape comics for Marvel's digital de department. Marvel would even hire him to do layouts for other artists because he just understood how well. The so vertical scroll was a bit of a learning curve for us, but I think we, we, we figured it out by the first five or six chapters or so. Um, Riley, though, draws the entire comic book page as a comic book page so okay. uh he his initial pages are all regular format comic pages then he separates the panels breaks them down into a vertical scroll on a pdf through photoshop and creates spacing for me where we know i'm gonna need more spacing because i wasn't working full script i was working plot um because i prefer to work that way I can and i certainly prefer to work riley because we get where we're going together, right? Um, so then I dialogue it and we script it, letter script it to the vertical scroll. So when we went from digital to print, um, none of the artists really had any work to do, <laughs> right? There was no redrawing, there was no re-inking, there was no recoloring. I had to do a lot of rewriting and Pat Rousseau, our letterer, had to do a lot of re-lettering because I'm writing more for the vertical scroll format because i have space between panels to create yeah. a, a, dot, a balloon flow that takes you on the scroll from one panel to the next so i'm writing usually sometimes substantially more than the the printed page can accommodate so out of the 150 or whatever pages the book is i had to do tweaks and rewrite to almost 70 pages um and and and, and that's fine it was fine i i it was interesting because it was me going back on work I did a couple of years ago, you know, and 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 fine tuning it. Oh wait, that this line will be better. Oh, that line didn't work, you know, as well. Oh, that line worked. I I can break it up into two, you know. And, and and in essence, getting to getting to to manipulate something that was already done just a little bit. Uh, it doesn't change the story at all. Uh, it, it only it only changed um, the the cadence, the flow, and the pattern for certain panels in certain themes. 
that that is absolutely fascinating. Yeah, um, it was cool. It was kind of fun. It really yeah, was. It was, I mean, a, it, it was a pain in the ass, but yeah. it was a lot. It, it was kind of fun too as a writing exercise, you know. And meanwhile, for a nice change of pace, the writer had the work to do, not the artist, because yeah. the artists always have the work to do. So <laughs> Riley and Jay Leaston, the anchor and manager of the color, they just sat there going, la, 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 <laughs> twiddling their thumbs <laughs> when I have to do. And Pat Pat didn't mind because he was getting paid to, to re-letter pages. So it's not like, you know, he, he, was, he was doing it for nothing. You know? so, it, it, so it was all it was all good. I'm 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 glad we're talking about this because it, it, that was that was really interesting here. You illustrate the the behind the scenes way in which those that was all put together. It kind of reminds me to dredge something from the deep distant past that's got nothing to do with comic books, which uh, so I've always found interesting. Uh, have you ever seen any of those alternate Laurel and Hardy shorts for the for the for the Spanish and South American market? No, the, there's, no. there's the four of the classic shorts from the from the very early thirties are in spanish and 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 were the were like the female leads are are uh, are, la are latin actors uh, and uh, and what they did was they all on hardy the guys at hal right shot them con concurrently with the english versions they're not dubbed and they had wow. uh, they had stan and ollie speak uh, spanish phonetically yeah Huh. And, and they did, they made four films that way. And in the end, I mean, because the technology back then didn't really exist. It's very early sound, didn't really exist to do the dubs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they can loop but, it and do dubs, yeah. But if you ever run into one of these things for the first time, they're actually, they're actually saying this, you know, you That's know what kind of I mean? That's kind of cool. That yeah, would be yeah. interesting, yeah. yeah. And, but, <laughs> yeah. but to take talk about something completely different, to whom you talk about that and what you have to inject into it, it's just so fascinating. Yeah, and I, I it's fun because what I... What I like a lot about vertical comics, um, even more so than horizontal scroll, what I like about vertical scroll is that you really can control the pace and flow through which a reader is going to scroll through. Um, you can you can manipulate them a little bit by how you place dialogue, where you place it, how you how much space you put between panels, um, and and. And I think because of the nature of it, many people scroll through quickly. So you create spacing in order to try to, in order to be aware that they're scrolling through quickly. You know, you 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 create balloons with t long tails that link from one to the next because that slows down the reader because they're seeing that there's a connected thought and in their mind they're slowing down a bit. So that, that that's kind of fun to do. And, and it's interesting that, uh, and, and it's why I, I think Riley is so, so good at, at it i'm working with other digital artists um other artists i'm sorry i should say i'm working with other artists that are doing digital comics in a vertical scroll format and they don't quite understand the need for breathing space the 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 the, the, the you can dictate the pacing by separating your panels as opposed to having everything together because if you have everything together you're already seeing what's on the next panel while you're scrolling down the panel you have and yes, you can look at a comic book page and see the entire page at once and you see what's happening. So why not take advantage of the fact that the reader can't see them? You know, why not use that to create drama, to create, you know, pause or emphasis in, in, in how they're reading the material? Because it's, it's a level of control you actually don't have in a comic book. You know, um, and, and I'm working with artists who are all very talented artists, but they don't quite have a knack for understanding how the reader is is reading this content on a phone and i don't know if the, the editors do either and they're all people i like very much and are good editors but i you know i've said to them more than once <laughs> face it out create some flow create some create some tension and moments of, of pause you know and and everything for them is just like a stack of panels like one on top of the other and i don't even like that because then i can't use dialogue in between panels if they're all stacked one on top of the other you know i'm working on a deadpool one right now i don't i'm not going to name names i'm working on a deadpool one right now where how how am i going to write deadpool to the best of his effect if i if i don't have the ability to overwrite him if i don't have the ability to have him pause while he's talking and and go back on a thought and go go on to a next thought in essence you know complete with himself while he's talking a vertical scroll format would ideally make that perfect now though the art i get i have to fit the balloons into the space i'm given rather than create the space for myself 
you know? Um, so what are you going to do? Read uh, Outrage, though, because Outrage was well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, that, it's so fascinating. And read Outrage, indeed. I'm, I'm Fabian. Thanks for coming along and, and talking about it. The, the print versions of Outrage are available in hardcover and softcover from the links attached. The links are there. They may be there if they're tricking us, but there should be there the links. Check it out. Rocket Ship Entertainment did a great job with it. The package, the, the books they put out are gorgeous. They really are. Um, and they did a great job with the package for Outrage. We're, we're really, really happy with the, the, the quality of the book. And we think it makes a really fun reading experience as well. Well said, brother. It really does. And uh, Fabian, it's it's always great to have you on the show, mate. It's always a good time chatting with you, brother. It's a pleasure to be here, Andy. Thank you. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.